evening and welcome to Credit Talk Kids Edition XL from the same people that brought you Credit Talk Kids Edition. But now this one is XL. What is XL? Bigger and better. Yes. So I have our special guest tonight, Olivia. Hi. Say hi to everybody hi. out there, our viewing audience. Thank you for tuning in. So this is a live call-in show. So please call now because our lines do get full. 312-738-1060. So, Olivia, we are so glad to have you here tonight. I'm so glad to be here. Came way, you traveled, what, hundreds and thousands of miles to get here just for the show tonight, so we really appreciate it. So let's get, let's get to business here, okay? Let's okay. roll up our sleeves, even though my sleeves are both rolled up. And let's get to our presentation. As I mentioned, it's Credit Talk Kids Edition XL. Not to be confused with the regular Kids Edition. So, got a couple of things here we'd like to talk about. Olivia, um, question for you. What are the three credit reporting companies? Um, TransUnion, yes. Experian, uh -huh. and Equifax. Ding, 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 ding. Congratulations. You are correct. So there are three companies out there, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Yes. And they are all for-profit companies. And what they do is they will report information about your credit. So things like credit cards. You know what a credit card is, right? Uh -huh. And do you, when you get a bill in the mail, are you supposed to pay it or forget about you it? You can pay it. You want to be in jail. <laughs> Forget about it. That's right. You don't want to be in jail for not paying your credit no, cards. It's crazy. You won't go to you won't go to jail, but okay. it's. I mean, uh, I mean, you might. You go to collection. They send you to collection agency, yes. and they might sue you too if you don't pay your credit cards <laughs> on time. <laughs> That's true. So it's very very important that when you get your bills at home that you pay them because if you don't pay them on time, they're gonna mark you late, and there's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days late, and eventually they will do what's called a charge off or profit and loss write-off, which is bad. You don't want that. So, Daddy, um, what is a credit report? What is a credit report? Hmm. That's kind of what we were just talking about. So they report, and they also, not only they talk about your bad credit, they talk about good credit, too. And it's going to usually show the bad stuff at the beginning, and then it's going to show the good stuff. So do you think, a, would you want a high credit score or a low credit score? What do you think? Um, I'd rather, in the middle kind of, I'd rather have high than low. Well, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to get into credit scores in a little bit. So yeah, you definitely want a high credit score. And the problem is if you have a low credit score, and the way you get a low credit score is by not paying your credit on time, not paying your bills. If somebody sues you, uh -huh. you know, they you owe money and you don't pay it, so they will uh, take you to court and possibly do a lawsuit. So it's very important that you get your stuff paid on time. So let's see what our next question is. Oh, okay. What is a credit card? Uh, Olivia, do you know what a credit card is? I think you do. Yes. So it's like a card you put your money on. So if you want to go buy something at a store instead of paying at cash, you just use this like, you know, little square thing. What is it made out of? Plastic. Right. And guess what? A lot of people call it plastic. They don't even call it credit. They get, you know, give me your plastic. Give me your plastic, right. Yeah. And um, I think we have another uh, topic about that. And let's go to our scene for our, our slide here. Um, oh, Olivia, that's a good question for you. How old do you have to be to get a credit card? 13. 13. Yep. 13 years in the business. Most banks... Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. No, 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 not credit card. A debit card. Oh. And that was my mistake. I'm sorry there. A debit card, you need to be 13. It's going to be kind of hard to get a credit card at 13 Because you have to have a job to get a credit card. Exactly. You because wanna... you have to, they send in a bill and you have to pay it with your, usually your own money. I guess you could use your parents. Right. Well, eh. so a, a debit card is a good one for you young viewers out there because what it's going to do, it's going to teach you good habits. It's going to teach you that if you have $100 in the bank, you want to um, don't spend $110, right? Uh -huh. You only got 100 And then the problem is if you spend more than 100 it's going to uh, 
affect you ne negatively. And they also do what's called service fees. And they can charge you, you know, $20, $30 on top of that. You know what? It looks like this. We got our first caller. So let's go to our caller. Hello, caller. Hi, my name is Emily, and I was wondering if I could get a credit card. I am 13. Oh. And so, I want to go shopping with my friends. So, is it Emily? You can get a debit card, but not a credit card because you have to have a job okay. to get an actual credit card, but you don't because you're 13. So, you can get a debit card. Thank you. Yes. Now, what, you know, a lot of kids, you know, when they're teenagers, you know, around 16 or so, can actually get kind of part time jobs like yeah, I did. Yeah, like maybe babysit or something. Babysit or work at hot dog stands. I worked at a hot dog stand for a little bit. <laughs> and then I got my dream job in high school. I worked for a, a major rental car company and I got to drive cars around. And I'm 17 years old. Could a, could a boy ask for a better job than that? I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. So, um, now that we got that out of the way, I think you have a couple questions for me. Yes. So, what is a, what is a poor credit score? A poor credit score. I'm going to cheat a little bit and show our viewing audience uh, a little cheat sheet that I've made here. So, credit scores, I mean, I've even seen them in the 400s very rarely because it just doesn't really exist. But... Anywhere from 500 up to 850. So as you can see by our model here, for 500 to 579, very poor. 580 to 619. You want to be over 619, you know, for sure, because um, FHA mortgages that we've talked about with our mortgage brokers in the past, you want to make sure that uh, you qualify for something like that. The higher your score, the better credit you're going to get. When they say tier one financing or jumbo loans, that's usually a score of over 740. And a tier one means you see these offers on TV where they basically say zero down. Zero you know, down. Yeah, zero down payment. Zero down payment, right? That's right. And um, no interest for you know 72 months, because if you have to pay interest on um, your on loans and stuff, it's very expensive. And if you can get an interest free loan, that's so much better. So. Hey, I think we got another call. Hello, caller. Hi, um, my name is Betty, and my daughter wants to get a debit card, but I'm a little concerned that she's just going to go and buy uh, a lot of things, like a cell phone, an iPhone, and go shopping and buy lots of food. How can I ensure that she doesn't extend uh, any um, uh, limit, or can I put a limit on a debit card? Uh, how can I control that? So, well, um, uh, Olivia, you take the take the floor, please. When you first register for her debit card, you can put only a hundred dollars on it, or like fifty dollars on it, so she can just spend it to her friends or something, so she doesn't go out all and buy a thousand dollar TV or something. Do you think if she oh. went to go buy a $1,000 TV, if she only had $100, will it work? It wouldn't if, work. They'd say, I'm sorry, you can't buy this. You don't have enough money on your debit card. That is oh, true. it would get declined at the store? Yes. Yeah. To, oh, that's great. And you can also put, um, you can put limits on there as well because you want declines because, as we mentioned, the problem is with debit cards, if you go a couple dollars over what and be overdrawn as they call it they call that over being overdrawn the, the fee is like $35 so if you go over by like a couple dollars of what you have in your account $35 it's a, like a 30 or $35 fee um, now you can also which you got to that be, affect a, a credit score is that connected or linked to a credit score you think a debit card is connected to your yes definitely eh. oh. sorry you are wrong oh no a debit card is not going to affect your credit score at all it's, and it's not going to help your credit score even though it has a Visa or MasterCard logo on it it does not help your credit score the best way to establish new credit is do you know 
okay. can take this one. All righty then. It's, it's called a secured a credit card. A secured credit card is where you're going to put money in the account, an account, special account, and they're going to give you a credit card. Say you put $500 in, your credit limit will be $500. And that oh, way, okay. yeah, so that's the way, and that goes on your credit report. But um, great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Your show is so helpful and you answer so, so many questions. Fabulous. And I'm really impressed with your little assistant huh. there. She seems yeah, that rascal. knowledgeable. Yep. Mm -hmm. well, okay, th thank you. Thank you so Bye. much for calling there. Don't mess my hair, please. Don't mess my hair, please. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> so uh, now you can also link uh, the the child's debit card to an adult card as a backup, but I, I'm not 100% sure how that works, you know, but you got to be careful because if you do only have $100 in there and you link it to your personal account and say you and have thousands get, in there, then they can get the TV. They might get that TV, and uh, the, the TV man will be happy, but uh, whoa, when you bring that bad 50-inch <laughs> back home, woo! Got some problems there, right? <laughs> it ain't going to be good. Oh, my gosh. Let's see what else we got here. Um, okay, these are some good questions for you, Olivia. Okay. I'm going to go on here to the screen here. And, again, this is a live call-in show, so be sure. Let me go back to our number. 312-738-1060. Call now and ask your questions. If you're too shy to be on TV, if you don't want to call, our number for the Help Center is right behind us. What is that number? Whoa! It's... 773-862-4000. That's right. That's the help center, so be, be sure to leave a message on there. There's nobody manning the lines at this hour. They might be out to dinner. We like to manage that thing 24 hours, seven days a week. We do take Christmas off, though. That, that's good. Yeah. You should. Like, it's good. So, so well, um, let's go to the question. I have a what? question for you. Oh, you do? I mean, it's... All right. How many credit Wait, cards... Wait, oh, oh, stop, 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 stop right here. We have another caller. Let's go. Hello, caller. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Okay, so if you've had your credit stolen and you've had repaired it and you're scared, you never want that to happen again, what do you recommend someone does to protect their credit? You've had your credit stolen, okay, and you don't want it to happen again. Do you know, Olivia? Uh, maybe you can, like, um, like almost freeze your account. Wow, very good. That is, that, is, that is true. Caller, did you have some issues with yours? Um, but it's not, okay, so it was stolen years ago, and I fixed it. Oh, good. So you fixed it, and now I don't want it ever happening again. So what you can do is what... Is if you ever notice something bad like happening to your credit or something, maybe you can like freeze your account and it comes straight to my dad. <laughs> but what about one of those companies that watches your credit for you? What do you think? Yeah, sure. I, I, I don't care. Do <laughs> you recommend one? Is there one? There are several companies out there that you can see advertised that do uh, credit monitoring, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not allowed to mention names, but... Anybody out there, feel free to call me at the help center, and I, I can disclose that information at that time. But there so are companies. So doesn't guard your credit? Yeah, there, there are things. But as we mentioned, um, they can guard it. They send you notifications. And it's very good for you to check your credit report, you know, once to twice a year, especially in your situation, caller, that you've had some problems, you know, you should check it a couple times a year or even, um, you know, subscribe to a monitoring service where you can see that. There are free ones out there. But remember, you get what you pay for. So in your situation where you've had some fraud, I think it's worth investing the whatever, $12 a month or whatever they charge mm -hmm. so you get, get the real information and get real time and notifications on there. How is your credit now, though, caller? Um, it's it's good. It's but it's been past the seven years now where they gave you free monitoring. So uh -huh. now I'm out on my own and I'm nervous and I don't know where to go and I don't know what company to use, who to trust. Have you ever, did you ever put a credit, um, a, what do you call it, a, uh, a credit freeze on your actual report, a fraud alert? Yeah, they allowed it for seven years that it said don't do anything without calling this phone number, right. but then past the seven years. Okay. Well, you can probably reinstate. Now that's, see, um, I, 
it's good and bad. The seven-year one, you must have really had some problems because it's usually like, uh, I think, a nine-month. They give you six or nine months. Mm -hmm. okay. And when you get that seven-year one, that's like you really had some bad issues. We've had a lot of people at the center where there's mm -hmm. been issues like that where they've had, uh, we've had to help them get that seven-year alert. And you know what the crazy thing is, caller? Even with that on there, they still get through. We've seen people where these people will get onto their credit report and they'll change the phone numbers on there. That's how sneaky these people are. I, I, it's wow. a lot of, you know, unfortunately some bad people out there that are doing this for fraudulent reasons because they want to, you know, s steal the money basically and get credit in your name and then not pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it's real important that I want you especially to watch your credit, you know, get the credit reports, you know, feel free to call us the center. We can direct you how you can get some credit reports and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and but it's very. I'm glad that you're really paying attention to um, your credit report and your your financial well being because it can wipe you out. I want someone out. else to pay attention to it, like a company that will make sure that somebody can't get through, like you just said. Yeah, there is pl there's plenty on there, but as I mentioned, okay. Okay. Uh, due to the 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 rules here at the station, I'm not allowed to say their names. Okay. So, so yeah, that's why I always tell people, give us a call at the help center behind 773-862-4000, and we can give you some information on there. Now, you know, caller, you know, you sound like a very educated uh, young lady, and have you ever gotten, you know, have you noticed that these telemarketers are calling like crazy now? Do you get those calls? No. You don't? Oh, that's good. Are you on the do not call list? I, I am. That's yeah. good, because, you know, once they get your... Uh, your information, even on the do not call list, the new thing is they're calling from, you know, foreign countries and uh, islands and stuff like that. But that's a whole other issue. So Well, my credit was, I know how my credit was stolen. I had the police involved and I know who stole it. Oh, that's even better. Well, kind of. It was somebody on the south side that stole it when I was at a hospital and I gave my um, social security number out. Yeah. That was it. I know. You know, in all these hospitals and doctors, they all want your social security number. It's Don't so give them your real one so ridiculous and they want it and then then you get in trouble you know it's not your fault but that's what's caller thank you so much our lines are getting full here okay all right, thanks thank have you. a great night thank, thank you, you olivia thank you bye hello caller how are you hi um i'm a senior in college and i'm about to finish school and i have a lot of student debt and I'm just wondering if there's any way I can refinance um, any of that debt or kind of get rid of that, or am I on the hook for for everything? Or um, and, and does that affect my credit score as well? Olivia, can you answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So what? What our caller is saying that they... That's a little young to be knowledgeable in that area. Well, sometimes these people, these you know, young ones know. But it's, it's very important that they learn. So what happens is a lot of times people will get student loans. These are loans that they get. They're government-backed, meaning the, the government insures them uh, in case you go bad on them, or they actually are part of, partly the lenders as well. And they give money so you can go to college. Now, what happens is college is very, very expensive. And... By the time you're done with four years or maybe more graduate school or even medical school, you go to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. They have all types of um, programs. You know, obviously the best thing is to work with Sally Mae or whoever the student loan company might be. And they have income-based payment plans. If you're out of work, they, you can put it on deferment, meaning that they don't, you don't pay it for a while. But the biggest thing is you cannot ignore student loans. I tell people all the time, student loans and taxes. And taxes Tax. and bills. Well, yeah, bills too. But student, even if you file a bankruptcy, do you know what a bankruptcy is? Is it like a record of your life? No. So it's basically when you can go into court and they wipe out all your debt. But they will not wipe out student loans and taxes, back taxes that are owed. So you're on the hook. And then what will happen, too, is that with student loans, if you don't pay them and you do get any kind of refund, student loans or taxes, they're going to basically grab that refund and apply it towards it. So I always tell people, don't ignore student loans or debt. And if you, they'll work with you. And I've seen also on credit reports, you can have student loans and it's broken. It's, it could be 
15 trade lines on there and showing every loan. They don't consolidate into one, but there are definitely plans out there. I would contact your company that does your student loans and get on some sort of program with them. Yes. Thank okay. you. Is it a I'm sorry? Okay. Is it a good idea to have credit cards at, at this point? Yes. Does that offset any of the student loans? Or um, if I have some good credit, will that uh, offset any of negative information? Well, it's a, mm, it yeah, yes and no. I mean, if you have student loans and they're in good shape, meaning that um, they're not late or they're not in default, you know, that's really because they're based on, you know, a longer term than a short, you know, car note or a credit card. So that does affect the score, but not as much as a bad credit card. So, or, you know, where you didn't pay on a credit card or if you had late payments. Now, when you start making late payments on that student loan, which we see all the time at the center, or you don't pay them at all, that really hurts the credit score and it's going to drop the score big time. So you want to make sure with... with um, Student loans, you've got to stay on top of it. We see so many times, again, people have so many student loans on there, they just don't pay attention. They get in trouble. So, so uh, much. So, but what the trick is stay in school, get good grades, and hopefully you get a scholarship, and you don't have to worry, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, what, call thank it. Thank you for thank, calling. Thank you so much. Okay, so Olivia, you had a couple of questions for me. Yes. And I have these questions already on. Our okay. computer, so we can. So, um, can I use my Macy's credit card at Old Navy? Well, unfortunately, no. You can't. Even though they're both fine stores, um, they're separate. They're, you know, you can't use a Macy's credit card at an Old Navy because each, a lot of department stores have their own branded credit card. But let me ask you a question. Can I use my Visa card at Macy's, the same Visa card, can I use that at Macy's and Old Navy? Yes. What do you think? Both, you can. Yes. And that's what we've discussed before on this show, Credit Talk, that I don't like department store cards because people get way too many of them. Now you've got 10 places to pay. There's so much more room for error. Get one or two, you know, Visa MasterCards. You know, if your credit's good, you can get some, some sort of card with an awards-type program, which will benefit you as well. Now you have only one or two places to pay. And a lot of the banks have a thing you can set up online that for some, as long as it's linked to a checking account, for some reason, if you forget to make that payment, it's going to draw the minimum payment amount. So the beauty of that is, you know, say you forget, you're out of town or God forbid you're in the hospital, um, you will, it will draw that $15, $20 out and you will not show any late payments. So it's really important to do that. What's your next question? Um, can I also buy a card with my credit card? Buy a car with your credit card. Well, excellent question. I've actually heard of some instance where people have, you know, fancy credit cards with big limits that they have bought cars. But the problem is the car dealership doesn't want to sell you a car using your credit card. The reason why is because when you use a credit card anywhere, at the department store, or at the grocery store, whatever it might be, they have to pay the bank a fee. So it could be anywhere from 1% to 3% of the purchase price. So if it's $100, they have to pay $3. If it's $1,000, they have to pay $30. So it adds up. So that's why on a big ticket item like a car, a dealership sometimes will let you put a couple thousand dollars on, but they do not let you know they don't want you to buy that whole car because they, they it could cost them thousands of dollars in fees as well so they'd rather not do a credit card but excellent question what's your next question for me um which is better to use a credit card or cash excellent question you know if you have a lot of debt on your credit card switch to cash or a debit card which is the same thing as cash basically when i was a when i was a young man boy there was there was cash. There were there was no such things as debit cards, so we all use cash. Uh, a lot, you know. I just saw on the news the other day. There's a, a, a gourmet hamburger chain that's going around. They have signs: no cash, debit or credit card only. So we're starting to see our society go in that direction where these people don't want cash because you know credit and uh, debit for them is a lot easier to handle. Plus, 
it's a lot safer, you know, if they get robbed, what's somebody going to get? There's no cash for them to rob. We're going to have to wrap this up soon, so do you, let's see. Let's go to our next question. One last question. What if somebody steals my credit card? Do I have to still pay? Excellent question. Uh, no, you don't. And what you do is you have to report it immediately. That's why it's good to check online. Always be able to go online and look at your accounts to make sure that there has been no fraudulent charges. Or some of the banks even send you notifications. My, it just happened to me a couple months ago. I got all these charges and I asked my wife, I said, did you buy something here or there? And she said, no, which I knew it wasn't. And I called up the bank, so I'm not re responsible for those charges. And then they issue a new credit card. They sent it to me and um, I'm back in business, but it's a pain in the neck. So uh, I think we have one more thing. No, we don't want to go with that one. No, we don't have time for that. Again, if you have any questions, give us a call at the Help Center. And, uh, whoa, let's see what we got here. Whoops. Happy birthday, Olivia. 11 years old in the business. Yep. All right, so high five. Make sure great. to call the Help Center. Yes, great show. Thank you very much. If you didn't get on, I know we left a couple people hanging out there because we had so much information to get through. Call us at the Help Center, 773-862-4000. That's a wrap for tonight. Thank you, and we will see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m. on Credit Talk.